Hello and welcome to ITIL4 Incident Management Practice Certification Training by One World Training. One World Training is an ATU of People Cert Limited, authorized training organization. That is, People Cert are the official developer and owner of these training materials. Copyright, People Cert International Limited and affiliates, all rights reserved. There will be some symbols on some of the slides, such as attention, book reference, for example, a definition from the official incident management practice guide, certain configuration or setting. A discussion, this is useful in a classroom setting. There may be further reading references. There could be some details regarding the actual practice, key learning points, some key learning objectives from time to time. Questions for you to think about. This can be interactive in a classroom setting. And when we come to the quiz, which is a multiple choice quiz, those can be reviewed. And sometimes we will have the syllabus mark. And then for certain activities, which are for you to do on your own, unlike group activities in a classroom setting, this clock will tell you how much time you have. But then since this is e-learning, you can use your own uh, experience to time it. Introduction to the course. In this course, you will be provided also with uh, the official sample papers from Axelos and PeopleCert. There will be two sample papers in the PDF format along with their answer details. You will also be given the official syllabus as well, and you will find this in your e-learning access. You will also have access to the official manual, the practice guide for incident management that is, and you will be able to access this when you receive the exam voucher from One World Training, and that voucher will also enable you to access your ebook for the incident management practice guide. There is a separate recording available. You will have access to that as well in order to understand how to book your exam as well as how to enable access or receive access to your ebook for the incident management practice guide. Let us begin with the course objectives. This is the incident management course. In this, you will understand the key concepts of this practice, the processes of this practice, the roles and competences, how information and technology support and enable the practice, understand the role of partners and suppliers in the practice, which means two, three, four, and five are related to the four dimensions of the practice. In number six, you will understand how the ITIL capability model can be used to develop the practice and number seven, understand how the ITIL guiding principles support the practice. We begin with module one, introduction to incident management. In module one, we are covering the following exam syllabus items, mainly understanding the key concepts of the practice, such as explaining the purpose of incident management, and understanding the practice success factors or the PSFs and associated key metrics. And also understand a few basic terms such as incident, incident model, major incident, workaround, technical debt, task priority, prioritization. Therefore, by the end of this topic, you will be able to explain the purpose of this practice, recall the definitions of the key terms of this practice, and explain how this practice success factors and associated metrics play their part. So we begin with the very basic, the purpose of the incident management practice. Can you recall this from your ITIL foundation training and certification? The purpose of this practice is to minimize the negative impact of incidents by restoring normal service operation as quickly as possible. So two things are happening here, minimizing the negative impact, and that is done by restoring normal service operation as quickly as possible. Which means that this practice ensures that the periods of unplanned service availability or unavailability or degradation are minimized 
and therefore reducing the negative impact on the users. There are mainly two factors which enable this, early incident detection and the quick restoration of normal operation. So the quick detection and resolution of incidents is made possible with effective and efficient processes, also automation and also certain supply relationships along with skilled and motivated specialist teams on the provider side. Resources from all the four dimensions of service management are combined to form the incident management practice and make it effective. What is an incident? This definition is taken from the book. An unplanned interruption to a service or reduction in the quality of a service. As an example, you might have an application which is going a little slow, which is a reduction in the quality, or if the application has stopped working or certain functionalities have stopped working, then it is an interruption to those aspects of the service. Now, what is normal service operation? From the service provider's perspective, or is it from the user's perspective, or is it from the customer's perspective? Remember the difference between the user who uses services and the customer who is responsible for the outcomes for service consumption and who defines the requirements. As we know, the purpose of the incident management is to restore normal service operation. And we, what we see here is what can be considered to be normal operation and how does this differ from the perspective of the service provider, service customer or user? Let us go into more detail about this. We've got here a table listing service provider and consumer and also subjective and objective aspects. The conditions of normal service operation are typically defined within service level agreements, the SLAs or other forms of service quality specification. And these would be agreed with the customer or defined by the service provider. In some cases, the internal service provider specification can include more quality criteria than were initially agreed with the customers meaning the internal specifications. So this practice is not limited to the service quality pursued by the users. It re includes restoration of the normal operation of services and resources, even when their failure or deviation is not visible to the service consumers, which means that the service provider had to be proactive in minimizing the awareness of incidents to users. So in this case, the normal operation where the users are not aware of the incident, normal operation can be defined in the technical specifications of services or configuration items because the service provider would have a better idea about the configuration items and the relationships between them. But if there is no documented specification of a normal operation, then an expert opinion from an expert may be used to assess the status of the resources and the services. So that's what we see in this table. So how do we define our process before concluding that an event is an incident? Which means when determining whether or not an incident should be registered, the following guidelines should be followed. A service behaves unusually. Is the user unhappy? If users perceive the situation as abnormal, it is recommended to register an incident and work on making users happy as quickly as possible regarding of whether there's a breach of SLA or not. The next, if the users have not reported anything but a service level agreement is breached, still register an incident and work to restore the agreed level of service before it affects users. Next, if a service or configuration item is not working as defined in a technical specification, then register an incident and work to restore normal performance before it affects the SLA and users. Lastly, if there is no formal specifications of service or component normal operation, or if the service works within the specifications, but a specialist or expert thinks that it is not operating normally, register an incident and restore normal operation as quickly as reasonably possible. And if we filter out from here, then there is no need to register an incident. Here, 
here we have the benefits of incident management. A quick restoration of a service is a key factor in user and customer satisfaction. And also the credibility of the service provider and the value the service provider creates in the service relationships. So the benefits are for the service consumer, reduced losses caused by business service unavailability, better image due to uninterrupted business services, higher client and employee satisfaction, meaning the clients of the consumer. For the service provider, on the other hand, reduced losses caused by IT service unavailability, the losses for the business of the provider, better image due to uninterrupted IT services, fulfillment of the SLAs with service consumers, reduced costs of service restoration due to knowledge capture and reuse, higher user satisfaction.